हेलो एवरीवन सो आई वेलकम यू टू द सीबीटी डिस्कशन फॉर द फॉरेन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट स्क्रीनिंग एग्जाम द एफएमजी एग्जाम सो एट डैम्स वी रिसेंटली कंडक्टेड अ कंप्यूटर बेस्ड टेस्ट इन व्हिच द फॉरेन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट्स वेंट टू द कंप्यूटर सेंटर्स टू अटेंड द एग्जाम एंड आफ्टर द एग्जाम वी थॉट दैट वी कैन गिव यू द वीडियो सॉल्यूशंस एंड बिकॉज़ वी वांटेड दैट दीस वीडियो सॉल्यूशंस शुड बी ऑफ हेल्प टू ऑल द फॉरेन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट्स रीजन इज because this fmg exam is getting phased out in future you will have a next exam so we thought we should be able to help a vast majority by doing this on youtube so what i'll do is i will discuss with you the 10 radiology questions from the mock test and i'll try to show you what are the high yield questions and why they are important okay i'll try my best to give a discussion on the questions which should help you to approach the questions well the entire idea in the exam is whenever you look at any question try to solve the question rather than being afraid of it i will teach you how to do it and let's do it together by looking at our first question what does the x ray shown to you depict this is a previous fmg question we asked the same question in our mock test and i want you to look at the x ray in front of you what is it that is a striking finding for you the striking finding is you can see a opacity in the right lower zone can you see a opacity here yes so in chest x ray the terms that we use are lucency and opacity if a disease i want everybody to listen to me and answer if a disease and if you know the answer you can answer in the chat box if a disease is having more air it will be more black we will say more lucent if a disease is having fluid or soft tissue it will be opaque what do you see here opaque now number 2 is is it fluid or not now i want you to look at a bottle of water okay so to make it easy let me drink some water you have air and fluid water has a property it will go down air has a property it will go up so if i ask you where should you see the fluid in the body you will see it in the most dependent recess what is the most dependent recess of the pleural cavity it is the costophrenic recess so the question my friend all of you is all the children who are looking at the question right now previous fmg question dam cbt question the cp angle on the right side is obscured number 1 making me suspicious this could be fluid in the pleura second property is the water tends to spread if i make the bottle like this the water will spread so where is the water it is spreading so the water has spread over the diaphragm if you have a moderate amount of effusion even the diaphragm is obscured okay all this is pointing towards pleural effusion it is climbing up slightly more laterally than medially this is the le's curve or the meniscus sign these are all the classic signs of pleural effusion some of you are still saying sir why this is not a pneumonia a pneumonia will not be totally opaque in pneumonia you should see air filled bronchi that is called as air bronchogram can i now get your final answer the final answer is pleural effusion but i will teach you how to approach the question in the exam suppose you did not know what i have taught you one of the choices is saying pneumothorax the problem is white pneumothorax should have air air should be black what is this the answer no this is ruled out okay emphysema means air is more in the lung both the lungs should be more black more inflated that is not the case you have a single side opacity that is not the answer bronchiectasis again a previous question should have tubular tram track signet ring like like lucencies in the lung which is not the case again by exclusion by ruling out you can go to the answer as pleural effusion okay and if you got it right in the cbt i am super proud of you as a teacher number 2 again a very important multiple times asked question or a topic in the fmg exam patient has 34 year old male low back pain long history of 6 months some inflammatory bowel disease is also there i want you to look at the x ray and i want you first to look at this area that i'm trying to highlight for you these are the si joints the si joints appear obliterated unilateral bilateral bilateral both the what all the spine is somehow fused together by ossification of the outermost disc fiber these are called as syndesmophytes 
and this appearance is called as bamboo spine so what is the appearance you see in front of you bamboo spine bamboo spine bilateral sacroiliitis history of inflammatory bowel disease all is giving you a idea that we are dealing with ankylosing spondylitis bamboo spine appearance what about pot spine if they ever show you pot spine you need to remember few things number one is two adjacent vertebra will be involved and there will be loss of intervening disc space earliest x-ray feature of pot spine previous fmg question loss of intervening disc space investigation of choice for pot spine mri investigation of choice for ankylosing spondylitis again mri which will show you sacroiliitis bilaterally symmetrical sacroiliitis earliest what will you see in psoriatic arthritis distal interphalangeal joint involvement with pencil in cup appearance distal interphalangeal joint involvement with pencil in cup appearance which joints do you think are involved in rheumatoid arthritis mcp and pip metacarpophalangeal proximal interphalangeal joints here the problem is in the spine the rule of the thumb is there are two kinds of arthritis zero positive rheumatoid arthritis is zero positive ankylosing spondylitis is zero negative in the zero negative arthritis the involvement is in the axial skeleton in the zero positive you have the appendicular skeleton so in spine involvement is mostly seen in ang spons the small joints of hand rheumatoid but if they ask you which part of the spine can be involved in rheumatoid arthritis the answer is c1 c2 don't forget many people do it wrong in the exam atlanto axial joint can be involved in rheumatoid arthritis very important question a classic question often repeated in the fmg exam in fmg either they will show you a dilated esophagus with tapered distal end that is achalasia cardia the bird beak appearance or they will show you appearance like this multiple non propulsive tertiary contractions in the esophagus giving rise to a cork screw appearance in which condition do we see cork screw esophagus anyone please rock the chat box let me know cork screw appearance is seen in diffuse esophageal spasm very important question either they will ask you achalasia in achalasia they will show you a bird beak appearance what will you see in ca esophagus ca esophagus you will see a um, rat tail a shouldered appearance a apple core like appearance i will show you the example this is how the ca esophagus will look like okay narrowing with overhanging edges which can be called as shouldering which can be called as apple core appearance a patient comes to you with a thunder clap headache they might say worst headache of his life what is the diagnosis on the image very often repeated what is this test this is a non contrast ct head what is it that you can see here you can see hyper density we all know acute hemorrhage on a ct scan appears hyper dense again a previous fmg question acute hemorrhage on a ct scan appears more white it appears hyper dense and in this particular image you can see hyper dense blood in the sulcal spaces in the basal cisterns all of this is pointing towards blood in the subarachnoid space and a patient with subarachnoid hemorrhage it happens if you have a ruptured berry aneurysm the patient will have a thunder clap headache the answer is subarachnoid hemorrhage okay some of you must be confused between the other choices i will help you sdh subdural hemorrhage will be concavo convex concavo convex and the history will be old patient alcoholic patient child abuse minor injury like sometimes they say old patient had a fall in a bathroom they are typically pointing towards subdural hemorrhage edh is due to rupture of middle meningeal artery sdh is due to rupture of bridging veins edh will be biconvex due to rupture of middle meningeal artery lucid interval is seen in extradural hemorrhage lucid interval extradural hemorrhage also remember edh cannot cross the sutures subdural hemorrhage sdh cannot cross the dural folds cannot cross the midline okay possible questions sometimes you will see a system wise distribution in your exam like one question on brain 
one question on barium one on bone if you notice this is the pattern of fmg radiology also here the question is identify the ivp image shown so i hope you were able to identify the problem i want you to look at the distal most part of the ureter the distal most part of the ureter is showing congenital dilatation at the uv junction you can see further dilatation looking like a head of a cobra this is called as the adder head appearance so can you tell me in which condition on ivp do you see adder head appearance ureterocele the congenital dilatation of the distal ureter which is the answer to this question okay let's look at a previous fmg question what is the investigation of choice for intestinal obstruction can anybody answer what is the investigation of choice for intestinal obstruction investigation of choice for bowel obstruction is a contrast ct can i ask you why because today we believe that x-ray can tell us if there is obstruction or not but it cannot tell us the cause it cannot tell us the etiology with a ct you can even tell if it is a malignancy or a internal hernia or strangulation adhesions we can tell what is the cause so investigation of choice is ce ct what how will you diagnose obstruction on ct the rule is 369 small bowel more than 3 cm large bowel more than 6 cm cecum more than 9 cm and i'm sure you studied in surgery cecum is more distensible so the cut off is higher for cecum as compared to rest of the large bowel number 2 the second question what is the initial best x ray to be done initial x ray preferred for intestinal obstruction anyone so we know for intestinal obstruction you do x ray abdomen supine and erect but what is the preferred initial x ray it is x ray abdomen supine why because in the supine plate you can see the distribution of bowel loops which helps you to find out where is the obstruction is a small bowel obstruction if the loops are more centrally placed if the loops are more peripheral it could be a large bowel obstruction okay let's see another question fast trauma blunt abdominal trauma very important okay so what is fast fast is the first step in evaluation of a patient with blunt abdominal trauma okay very important possible question for your fmg exam anyone so why do we do fast because in a blunt abdominal trauma we don't know where is the injury we are the patient has injury but there is no stab wound this is not a penetrating trauma so the surgeon wants to know is there any solid organ injury do i need to operate if there is any solid organ like spleen injury what will you have you will have anyone you will have hemoperitoneum and the fast is trying to detect hemoperitoneum now look at the choice number 3 first it can diagnose hollow viscous perforation have hollow viscous injury not true if you have a bowel injury the air from the bowel will come up and uh, fast is looking for blood in the peritoneum it is not looking for air in the peritoneum so the choice number c is definitely false okay the fast is mainly done for solid organ injury mainly done for blunt abdominal trauma okay it is trying to look for hemoperitoneum it can also miss it can also miss mesenteric trauma retroperitoneal trauma diaphragmatic injury these are the kind of injuries which can be missed on fast okay let's see the other choices technique focuses on pericardial splenic hepatic and pelvic area correct you do put it in the four places if you also look at the thorax it is called as extended fast it is operator dependent correct any ultrasound investigation is operator dependent it takes time to learn the skill it can be used in the penetrating injury correct it is best used for blunt trauma but the question is saying can be used again that is true it can be used but best used for blunt abdominal trauma identify the mri sequence shown to you this is a mri of the brain the reason this is a mri is because you can see the bone and fat the bone is dark the fat in your scalp is white this tells you that i am looking at a mri image what plane this section is this is a 
transverse section but in radiology we don't say transverse we say this is a axial section of the MRI okay what is the color of the CSF where will you look for the CSF you will see the CSF in the ventricles can you see the ventricles are appearing dark the CSF is appearing dark now you have to look at the gray and white matter the gray matter is present in our brain cortex that is the superficial gray matter it is present in the basal ganglia that is the deep gray matter and this is your white matter we have to look at the relationship between gray and white matter everybody see with me do you agree as compared to the brain cortex or the gray matter the white matter appears dark white matter is dark on a t2 weighted image but in t2 weighted image the csf should be white this is a t2 weighted image if i look at the brain parenchyma but the csf signal has been suppressed a t2 weighted image in which the csf signal has been suppressed is called as flare so that we can see any brain pathology better we suppress the csf signal flare is fluid attenuated inversion recovery sequence some of you had marked t1 weighted image that is not true t1 weighted image the white matter will be more white than the gray matter this is how you differentiate a flare and a t1 weighted image okay okay one question based on ultrasound which of the following structures is an echoic this is a term used in ultrasound and we need to know any structure which is full of water will appear an echoic on ultrasound can you name a thin walled structure a benign thin walled structure which has full of water that is a cyst so cyst will be anechoic two more questions as distal to the cyst what will you see distal to the cyst you will see posterior acoustic enhancement don't get confused with shadow distal to the stone bone and air distal to stone bone and air you will see acoustic shadow distal to the cyst you will see posterior acoustic enhancement and also remember investigation of choice for solid versus cystic is always always ultrasound whenever you have a lump and you want to characterize the lump is it solid is it cystic the investigation that you will do is ultrasound mark my words potential question for your exam and the final question in the test was which of the following is not the strength of ultrasound as a diagnostic modality okay everybody there is no radiation exposure correct this is the reason why they have asked you this in the past fmg also that ultrasound is safe in pregnancy there is no ionizing radiation it has a short learning curve no ultrasound takes time to learn that is why the only drawback of ultrasound is it is operator skill dependent it is inexpensive correct allows dynamic studies to be done correct allows you to guide any procedure also correct okay but the only choice which is not correct here is b and i hope you got 10 out of 10 correct if you got 10 out of 10 correct please tell me in the comment box i will be super happy super excited and if you got less than that don't panic always tell yourself okay that is my final message for the day always tell yourself i am a i am a learner i am trying my best to learn with every test don't panic if you see a dams video and you don't know the answer it is there to help you learn you are trying to improve every single day of your life so that when you give the exam you make the least possible mistakes okay so don't be too harsh yourself on yourself don't be judgmental on yourself many children come to me and say sir i did not do the dams cbt well now i will not be able to do the fmg exam well that is not true the purpose of the exam is to give you practice to give you acclimatization to the exam environment and the entire idea that i have is that i always believe that i am learning and i want you to do the same to yourself you are learning you are not perfect every exam that you give every test that you give every class that you attend you are learning and improving and you are doing it so that you make the least amount of mistakes in the real exam i'm sending you my blessings and my best wishes keep rocking and do the best in the exam and let me know after the exam your results i'm waiting for your results on the other side